Uh, good morning. It's uh, Tuesday, July 19th. Our top story today is an interesting article from Japan about how the largest seafood companies, which are Japanese, uh, such as uh, Nippon Suisan and Maruha Nichiro, are not the most profitable seafood companies. Uh, the article goes on to compare uh, companies like uh, Marine Harvest in Norway, Pesca Nova in Spain, and Pacific Andes. And in each case, uh, these companies, though smaller, uh, have higher levels of profitability. Uh, the reason really appears to be controlling production of product. Uh, this is the key to uh, profitability in the seafood industry. And it's uh, one of the things that's uh, driving uh, some of the consolidation that we're seeing around the world. Uh, in this particular article, uh, Nikkei analysts think that uh, the fact that national uh, countries uh, want to limit foreign ownership of their fish resources is going to serve as a natural barrier to uh, global consolidation. Uh, the fact is that uh, fish all starts with supply and control of supply is actually key to uh, making money in the seafood business. Uh, on the, but on the other hand, uh, buying into controlling seafood supplies is very difficult for traditionally oriented uh, venture capital and other people like that because of the volatility. Uh, profitability often depends on volumes and throughput and you take something like the Alaska Pollock fishery which in 2009 saw a 50 percent drop uh, from their uh, prior uh, harvest levels. Uh, we all know in the business that these fish stocks fluctuate uh, but the fluctuations are hard to capture uh, in financial models. Uh, in any event, uh, we thought this was a um, interesting analysis. And I think there's a lot of truth to it. Uh, and it also shows the importance of uh, uh, investing in uh, vessels and fleets as companies like Pescanova and Pacific Andes are doing. In Nantucket, Mass., uh, this is John Sackton.